your community recently declared a state of emergency for water issues. What can you tell me about um, the water issues that your community is facing? Well, it's probably accumulation of uh, issues, water being one of them. You know, our community uh, uh, declared the Boil Water Advisory 18 years ago, uh, August 1st. So uh, since that time, uh, it's been attempts to try to address that. And so finally, we've uh, have a new uh, water treatment plant that's under construction, you know, uh, soon to be commissioned. So hopefully that will address a lot of the issues. But the latest, uh, I mean, the last report I got was uh, was the one that was alarming. You know, when I started seeing the reports, how long these uh, TA THMs at the levels they were, uh, that to me, you know, and then I got information from... Uh, health officials uh, about that, because I, I had to get educated on that as well, and uh, sustain prolonged use. So I asked the question, what do you mean prolonged? How long? I yes, said, it could be 20 years. I said, in layman terms, please tell me, well, what do you mean? It's like a slow poison that could cause uh, bladder cancer or ovarian cancer. Uh, so we're already 18 years into the boil water advisory. Uh, coupled with this, too, uh, we know now that the new treatment center is going to put a lot of pressure on our uh, lift station, which is part of our sewage uh, outflow to the lagoons and that. We've had several in the last 20 years overflows into the bay and, uh, and the lake uh, where we get our drinking water. So, And then coupled with that, we've, uh, we've had a lot of problems with our uh, aging uh, generator sets. We're on diesel uh, generation sets and... Uh, so that uh, compounds the problem because uh, electricity is needed to keep the pumps going. And um, so anytime we have a power outage, uh, we have to get a portable uh, generator to uh, get started on a lift station, which is the, the main one that pumps the sewage to, to the lagoon. So with water and sewage and electricity, all those are three services that the community relies on 24-7. It's not like uh, your Monday to Friday. Any plans to, to monitor symptoms, um, anything like that? I wanted numbers about uh, uh, what I would consider people that would be most impacted by uh, water. And uh, almost immediately I got um, uh, a list of, uh, we got 35 babies that are less than a year old. We got 156 children from 13 months to five years. We got 17 prenatals, we got 52 elders, and three uh, uh, on kidney dialysis. And, uh, and these, uh, the nurse in charge, uh, considered the most vulnerable. So that's a significant number. You know, you're talking about 20% of the population. We're almost 1,600, you know, uh, in the community. You had a meeting with Indigenous Services Canada today. What are you asking for, and um, what have you heard that they're prepared to commit right now? In some ways, it looks like it's patchwork, which... Uh, we don't believe that's a solution, you know, uh, um, uh, we call those band-aid solutions, but we want to ensure that the transition from our old system to the new, that uh, people can have confidence in that. If that lift station, uh, particularly the main one, uh, is, not, uh, uh, is not upgraded, uh, we are going to have problems with uh, overflows at that, at that lift station. Uh, I just hope, uh, because we declared uh, an emergency, they're not going to fast track this. We want to make sure that, that, uh, that uh, an orderly t steps are taken, uh, that uh, you know, they don't rush into this, you know, that because uh, um, we, can't, we can't risk that, you know.